I'm at the 9-11 Memorial Museum and I'm joined by Cheyenne Hyde. Cheyenne, thanks so much for talking with us today. Yeah, of course. Can we go take a look around inside? Yeah. All right, let's go. 9-11 is shorthand for Tuesday, September 11, 2001, when 19 hijackers affiliated with Al-Qaeda decided to hijack four commercial airline flights and use them as weapons against highly symbolic landmarks of American life. Wow. It just starts off like a, a normal day because it's the first day of school, it's the mayoral primaries, and about two billion people witness it live because you have internet, you have radio, and then TV who are now showing their viewers what's happening here. Two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. So the first attack began at 8.46 a.m. when Hijack Flight 11 struck the north face of the North Tower. At 9.03 a.m., Hijack Flight 175 struck the south face of the South Tower. At 9.37 a.m., Hijack Flight 77 struck the outer ring of the Pentagon, which is the headquarters for the U.S. military. And then at 10.03 a.m., Hijack Flight United 93 uh, was deliberately crashed into a field in Somerset County, Pennsylvania. Now that flight is kind of different because that flight was coming out of North New Jersey, a very congested airport. They happen to be delayed about 45 minutes. Finally, when they're in the air, they realize that something is wrong. And then they realize that they're being hijacked. So from the air phones that are still on the planes in 2001, they call their loved ones and the authorities who are on ground. And they tell them what's happening, their situation on board. And as a result, their loved ones and the authorities are telling them what's happening here in New York City and also in Arlington, Virginia at the Pentagon. So those 40 brave men and women, they vote to stage a counterattack. They boil water in the back of the Kitchener area of the plane, and they use a food cart as a battering ram to try to gain access into the cockpit. Now, once the four hijackers realized that they probably would not be making it to the intended target, which we now know was the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., where Congress was in full session that morning, they decided to crash that plane into an empty field. So the, the other airplanes that were in the air were starting to hear about this, right? Yes. And for one out with Charlie, uh, there's some sort of a problem going on out there that, uh, on the East Coast that we need to know about. Uh, yeah, I'll keep you advised on that in a second. And Trans 797, Cleveland. Yep, but from Hijack Flight 11, we had a flight attendant named Betty Ong who made a phone call during the hijacking to American Airlines reservation agents in North Carolina. And 23 minutes, she remains calm and professional as she's reporting about the situation on board the plane and also the identities of the five hijackers. And after that first phone call, really the FAA decided to ground all flights nationwide. So after they grounded all the planes, what happened to all the people? You have people who are stranded, really, people who can't get back from their vacations, really have no idea what's going on because for some of them, they were stuck on these planes for a number of hours, not maybe being able to get off, go find some hotel, but uh, it wasn't until maybe a few hours later that they heard the news of what had just happened in New York City, and they probably now had an understanding of what their situation would be like. So are there still effects from 9-11 being felt today? Of course, we have the Transportation Security Administration, TSA. You have to be completely x-rayed, you have to be patted down uh, with carry-ons. You can't have huge amounts of liquid, you can't have uh, weapons on board. This has been an incredible experience and it brings back to me where I was on 9-11. You know, I was teaching class full fifth graders and what that day was like. How do you talk to students about this day when they weren't around? I encourage them to talk to their parents. Ask them what their experience was on September 11th. Ask questions. It's a hard thing to understand why anybody would do this, but it's important that we learn what happened on September 11th. And coming to the museum, we have visitors, kids, school groups who come who also were in Britain before 9-11. And that is how they learn, really watching and reading. So do good research and really ask the questions that you feel are necessary to ask. Thank you so much for Thank having us here so today. Thank you so much for coming.